here is part two, meaning part three, script three for Wisteria uh, to read through. If I can find this episode three, current, there we are. All right, let's dive right in. Uh, episode three, interior root cellar in game, uh, close up of Alice. Uh, this is the first time we've seen uh, Alice as a character in game. Uh, she should be recognizable. She's wearing a simple shift and a, and a peasant dress. Confused, she sits up, looks around. She's in a dank, dirty, primitive root cellar. It's day daytime, but there are no windows. The only light is leaking in from a few, a few gaps uh, where the foundation meets the framing of the building above. Uh, I'll play Alice, okay? Sure. What the hell is this? Guys, Ronnie, Joao? Alice stands, walks through the cellar, peering at the strange shapes in the darkness. She finds the door and pushes it open to reveal a short flight of stone steps leading uh, up to ground level. Uh, she blinks in the sunlight and looks around. She's outside a shabby peasant farmhouse in the English countryside. She looks down at her handle, uh, her handle, sorry, her hand, looks down at her hands, her dress. How can I be in the game? How can I be in the game as me? Am I still jacked in up there? What the actual fuck? A chicken walks up to her, clucking, and looks at her expectantly for a moment. Can't help you, sister. I don't even know if I can help myself. <laughs> okay. How do I log out when I'm not in deep bug? Uh, I guess I have to wait until the boys wake me up or the lethosynth wears off. Oh, but I didn't take lethosynth. I remember who I am, and I don't remember what character I'm playing. Well, that can't be right, can it? Everything about this is totally, totally not how it's supposed to be. Did I even wake up from the debug test? I remember logging out then. Nothing. Maybe the logout failed and instead it put me here. Alice takes a cloak from the clo uh, takes a cloak from a clothesline. <clears throat> a creak, then a door slamming. Alice looks up in alarm. A farmer comes around the corner of the house holding a scary looking ax. Alex panics and runs. Hey. The woodcutter gives chase. This may be hard to animate. Feel free to change it. <laughs> Faster. Come, <laughs> Faster. Come on, legs. You're not real anyway. I need more speed. We get the impression that maybe Alice is indeed running faster. She quickly gets to the edge of the forest, running among the tree trunks, panting heavily until she jumps behind a mossy, uh, fallen tree. She looks back, sees no sign of pursuit. Gradually, she's able to get uh, her breathing under control, but she's still panting as she says uh, uh, the next several lines. God, what do I do? Boys are still logged in. I guess I have to wait until they wake up from the lethicent. <sighs> okay, then they can pull me out. Come on, guys, get me out. Cut to exterior of the docks night. Ronnie and uh, Joao are fast walking down a dark street, breathing hard. Shuao is frantically messing with his phone. Ronnie is looking at uh, a piece of paper. He crumples and pockets it. No ID, no wallet, just our address on a dry cleaning receipt. What kind of cop drama shit is this? Is her phone still moving? Yeah, we're gaining. Uh, must be someone on foot. Close up of Zhao's phone with a futuristic hackery version of Find My Friends showing a blip uh, for them and a blip for Alice's phone. I'll kill that motherfucker. No, we need information. Also, not being murderers would be good. Fuck, fuck. Did you do the thing to erase us from the cameras? Yeah, it's running. It should be good for a while before I have to re in on it. Any way to tell if she's at the hospital yet? Yeah, uh, hang on. Well, uh, looks like they admitted her to St. Elizabeth's. Is she? I don't know. Hacking in the hospital system for her status will take some time. Damn it. Right now, we can't lose this guy. I gotta get, I've got my breath back. You? They start to run. Uh, as they traverse the city streets, we get our best picture yet of life in future LA. There are people lying, in cata uh, lying catatonic in the street with VR glasses on. There are lights of uh, flying drones in the sky. There is a glass walled penthouse built uh, on top of a shabby old building lit up with holographic VR game and uh, a bunch of partiers and whatever else uh, we can VFX up. Uh, <laughs> cut to exterior forest in game, late afternoon. Alice walks among trees. Wait, Joao said there was a way to get out early. A code phrase. 
but you had to say it in front of a mirror for some reason. Something about self-recognition in the renderer. I'm gonna find a mirror. Probably not in a farmhouse, maybe in a tavern or a fancy estate. No, that'd be harder to sneak into though. What are the chances there's something like that nearby? Where am I anyway? Where are you guys? Cut to exterior, the city, night. Ronnie and Drow are still jogging through the streets, but streets uh, they're on are getting busier. View from a security camera. Random people are walking along. Software draws a box around each face and labels it with the name of the basic and basic biological information. Ronnie, uh, Drow and Ronnie jog past. The software draws boxes around their faces, briefly starts uh, to show the first few letters of, the, of their names. Then the text box flickers out and disappears. Oh, that's nice, yeah. How can there be a snapshot of Alice in the game? It's not supposed to store snapshots. And our connection's not fast enough to upload. Like, what are we even talking about? A mind, a personality? It could be super, super compressed or... Um, I still don't get what that means when we're talking about people. Like a caricature. Uh, some of the complexity is missing, but you wouldn't know right away. But also remember, Alice was in the drone once. You think it saved her all this time after she logged out? They're not supposed to do that. Also, you know what? Let's um, let's wind back to the beginning of this conversation now that I'm getting a better feel for what's happening in Joao's head. Can we take it back to how can there be a snapshot? Hit it. Sure. How can there be a snapshot of Alice in the game? It's not supposed to store snapshots. And our connection's not fast enough to upload, like, what are we even talking about? A mind? A personality? Could be super compressed or... I still don't get what that means when we're talking about people. Like a caricature? Some of the complexity is missing, but you wouldn't know right away. Uh, but also, remember, Alice was in the drone once. You think it saved her all this time after she logged out? They're not supposed to do that. Also, if that's the case, maybe it ID'd her mind. Pattern matched it even in debug mode. That could be how they found her. Shit. Yeah. Ugh, shit. Alice, I'm sorry. We're going to fix this. We can fix this. Cut to exterior road in game sunset. Uh, Alice uh, approaches the tavern. She walks up past a coach with horses and true groomsmen standing silently looking at her. Interior tavern in game. Alice enters the uh, common room. There are several people in it, uh, the beginning of an evening crowd. There are tables, benches, a bar. She sees that uh, there's a dirty mirror behind the bar. A young girl walks up to, up to her holding a rag and some empty mugs. You want dinner, miss? I just want a drink. Can I sit at the bar? Of course you can. Any place. Thanks. Alice walks up to the bar. She takes a deep breath. The bearded fellow behind the bar addresses her. What can I get you, miss? A grin without a cat. Eh? Huh? Alice has her eyes locked. Uh, Alice has her eyes locked on the eyes of her own reflection in the mirror. A grin without a cat. A grin without a cat. A beat. Nothing happens. Uh, it's supposed to be some kind of fancy drink? A grin without a cat. 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 Barkeep makes the sign to ward off the evil eye, reaches for something under the bar. Perhaps you best be moving on, miss. Shit. Oh, shit. Alice looks around. Everyone in the bar is looking back at the weird lady. Alice turns and runs. Cut to exterior, the city, night. R and J around the corner. Uh, and there is a, uh, there is a street market festival. Where is he? Mm, block and a half, maybe heading to Lart. The boys start pushing their way through the crowd. They emerge from the end of the street, run down the next block. There's an open square with an empty subway station, with a subway station uh, visual effects. Trial points. Zoom in on a man in a dark trench coat, walking slightly forward and a, in a slightly awkward, shambling way, not unlike the guy uh, on the dock in episode two. This is Ken. They close in on Ken. Are we sure? Definitely him. Ronnie runs up to Ken just as uh, he starts down the steps uh, to the station. Ronnie bumps or trips Ken. Ronnie is trying to be subtle about it and is almost and is mostly successful. Ken falls. If there's not a safe way to do this, then we have to rethink it. Uh, Ronnie plays uh, an apologetic, helpful bystander, moving to help Ken sit up 
pretending uh, to check him for injuries while actually picking his pockets, close up in quick cuts uh, as he removes the man's wallet, a phone, and a switchblade. There's blood on the switchblade. Are you all right, sir? <laughs> Dan? You want to take this one, Dan? <laughs> sure, I'll do it. Frick Gromish Gifflin roll. I'm sorry, what? Drum Drochid Mukshar Hook. Drum Drochid. Drum Drochid. Ronnie looks back at Drow. That sounds familiar. Ken tears a place in Scotland. Ken tears himself away from Ronnie as the train uh, screeches into the station. Ken hurries towards it. The, the gate lets him in. It's okay if the viewers uh, won't know uh, whether that's normal or not. Uh, Ken looks uh, back uh, briefly, points at the sign on the train, which says Anaheim. From the draw sheet! The boys are left standing, slack-jawed, as Ken boards the train and pulls away. End. All right, first impressions. Mm -hmm. I like it and I want Alice to be a little more competent I'm okay if she's a fish out of water of course I don't need her to like snap into the idea of this is my situation but I like where can I find a mirror, probably not in a farmhouse, all that. Okay, may I, may I add on to that? Um, yeah. Because I'm, yeah. I'm sort of coming from the other end of it, which is like, I feel like she needs to land on a thing, you know, like she needs like a, a button to the end of her journey. Uh, so like they, like, so there's some sort of, um, like, I think there's a good like speed happening between the two worlds, right? Um, and uh, like, it might be possible to even intercut it even more, I guess. Um, but they should end on sort of opposite notes. Like the boys should be like, what the fuck? And she should be, I did something, you know? So like one, like one thing locks down and the other thing gets more confusing. But right now it's sort of, they're both confused. And I think that's, uh, that's a little, that's less satisfying than it could be. Like, I feel like someone's got to have achieved a thing. So we feel like a, um, like a step was taken. Uh, and, uh, and the boys may get more information, but it confuses them more. Like, I think that that's, if you have those two sides, then you have a sort of interesting balance in terms of the, the flow. Right. And so with Alice, when you said like, you'd like her to be more competent, like if she figures out something, like she goes, okay, if I can't do that, then maybe I can do this, you know, and does something that is kind of decisive. Um, and especially if it's something that can do something to connect them, connect the two stories a little bit. I don't know what that's going to be, but if it's something like if she takes an action that while the other guys are fishing for information, she's able to do something that draws their attention in some way, whatever it is. So they, so you feel like there's a little bit more of a, like that it just barely touches um, between the two stories. That would be really helpful. I don't know what, again, I don't know what that, I don't know what the answer is there, but just flow wise, I feel like we have, we've had a good, like the bulk of this is really sort of exciting separation, you know? And I actually really like in the read through something that wasn't clear for me when I read it to myself is that you had a really good picture of Zhao's state of mind versus Ronnie's state of mind. Like Ronnie sounds really panicked. Like he's like, he doesn't know where to land on this at all. And it's, it's a right. nice, the nice difference from the sort of like confident jokey guy we saw at the bodega, you know, like he is, he is totally at sea and he can't, like he has no, unlike Drow, who is like, I am doing things, you know, I'm successfully doing things. Yeah, but, but it's also, it also seems pretty clear that Zhao is, is, a hundred percent just reacting tactically. Oh like, yeah, absolutely. There is a next move now and like right. whatever happens later is later and somebody right. else will figure that out then. Right, right. And so like, uh, I guess that's what I'm arguing is like, she should be the synthesis of those two feelings. Like- Well, she could be strategic. Right. Right, if, if Joao is completely tactical, what if, she, what if she looks in the mirror, she says a grin without a cat a couple times. Mm -hmm. The barkeep asks whether it's a special drink. Mm -hmm. She pauses for a beat. 
and says, um, you know, a tankard of ale or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then she takes a sip and she looks in the mirror and says, you know, Yankees over the Pacers by a 16 point spread or something <laughs> like that, you know, that, that's, that's meant to be sort of enough out of place that it could be a hook for anyone looking for her. Right, 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 right. You know, like says yeah. something to the mirror that clearly doesn't belong right. under her breath so that she's not the crazy person, right. but like is clearly trying to send a message. Yeah, okay, so, the, okay, this is interesting because if she's like, great, I'm the crazy lady, right? Then she goes, then essentially she goes, oh, great, I'm the crazy lady. Like, oh, I didn't even think of that. That's like, nice. they, like they, they, this is like, if I if that's true, that'll draw attention. And if I draw some attention, they can they will find me. Like someone will be watching a feed and this will be weird. And uh and it'll offer up a way to connect. You know, like she's she is using uses that to reach out. I think mm-hmm. yeah, so I think you're onto something with that. I think that's something we should consider right mm-hmm. there. Because mm-hmm. I, I really do like the I like the flow of this. Like I liked it when I first read it, but it really like as soon as you guys started reading it, I was like, oh, this yeah, now it now I hear it. It's like snappy, snappy. And yeah. uh and uh and I can feel how sort of and I also like especially I can imagine like all that dialogue like that's being intercut not only between the two guys, but over the recognition animation, like playing that dialogue as you are sort of taking the point of view of a computer that's trying to understand something is really interesting. Mm. So I think that there's a lot mm-hmm. of good levels visually to make that happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the, the only thing is like, you know, they, they, they do something like, you know, Rao does something clever and does get information like knife, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but uh, I think that, uh, and like, and whereas Ronnie's like out in the cold emotionally, um, but then you have, uh, you have a landing scene where, um, where Alice goes like, okay, fine. I'm going to send up a flare. And of course, like mm-hmm. sending up a flare is also bad. Like she just doesn't realize right. that it's bad. Right. Right. Like, yeah. Right. And, and I think we don't, I think we get, we'll get that in episode four. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, you know, so and, Ronnie actually is the one who picks the pocket, by the way. Oh, I'm right. sorry. Yeah. Ronnie's the one who picks the pocket. Right. Well, cause so, that's what he yeah. finally knows how to that's do. The, yeah, exactly. He can act. Yeah. He can act. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. That's okay. Very, very satisfying. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's great. Okay. So that's awesome. That's fantastic. Um, and uh, so like it could, maybe this is jump of the gun, but just to throw it out there. Like if we have a moment where uh, like, like Zhao can like search for, like search through uh feeds or people watching stuff because like if if we've already introduced the idea that ronnie's like someone was watching the fucking thing we were doing and then joao could be like someone was watching that what was it like what channel was that or what blah 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 blah. and you can start searching for that feed and then you get like like you know drama in a bar and you see like crazy woman in the background like they go that's okay now we know like then we make this connection right and uh, and then the if we wanted to, we don't have to do this this soon. But if we wanted to throw in the button of like whatever, the queen gets the information, you know, so we can introduce the idea of the queen or any of the queen's lackeys going like, what is this? And that's the tag moment that is apart from all of them. And it's the first. It, then it's the first moment this, of Wisteria that shows that Wisteria operates independently of. The act those these particular actors like this is actually no, I think this space. I think that I think this needs to be the moment where we see the queen observing this. We don't know who the queen is. We only know she's in game, and it's the right. last time we see the queen for episodes and episodes and episodes. Right. But yeah, this is the time to foreshadow that. I think. Right. Right. Because they you know that's the uh, Wizard of Oz like the witch looking at the crystal ball routine, you know. Right. And I, and I think yeah. that that's a, that's that may be a good moment to uh, to drop that. Um, but other than that, like I actually had. I had more notes in this episode going in, but I think I, I'm i going to hold on all those because it was almost just about the density of sort of information that's being uh, relayed. But it's like, as long as, as long as it's emotional, then it plays great. And I feel like the, um, what was the one thing? Oh yeah, the one I, I wrote the notes, but the, um, I was thinking like Alice could, we could do sort of a thing. And I'm, let me know what you guys think about this, like animation wise. Like Alice could say a bunch of her, say some of her lines, mm-hmm. uh, VO some of her lines, right? 
where she's not speaking, right? Okay. And those might be doubled by text that appears in a sort of a notional comic book way uh, in the animation, hmm. you know? So you just see like, so like it's a little bit more like uh, interactive to watch her think through this. Like there's stuff, there's stuff that's like present and vocal. There's stuff that's sort of thought through and made into words. And then there's stuff that's like wor- concepts that are written for us, but haven't really made it all the way up to her. Uh, speaking them out loud. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I mean, just have this sort of weird, instead of like just having her narrate to herself, which is unlikely, like when I, I mean, I do talk to myself, you know, uh, I hope other people do, but I, I mean, I like, I definitely talk to myself and I, I sort of half say things like some of the stuff becomes vocalized and some of it is sort of sub Rosa and there might be animated ways to sort of throw those things into the mix and emphasize the, the animated quality of what we're watching uh as well and sort of mix mix those things together something you want to experiment with unless you think it's a terrible idea I'd, I'd like to see what it looks like now hold on a sec let me see if i can oh And I think all of all of that um, deeply informs what we do with episode four. So I don't know that we necessarily want to read through episode four yet. I think it's going to want some okay significant yeah. editing based on that. Yeah, that's all good. But I, I, I definitely I think these are feeling really good. Read. Yeah. And I think the, um, like, I think we don't want the boys to receive Alice's message yet, right? Like the queen receives it before the boys do. Right, like <laughs> right. right. The they, can, they can start looking for stuff. Like we can start them down the road of doing that. But the discovery that it's like, is like, they may even talk about it or like it's something to sort of bring it up. Um, but like, if we, I think the punchline should be the queens for sure. I don't know if it, they, like, I, me, that okay so my first instinct is that they shouldn't yet because okay. in my mind like alice is so much like more mature than they are in terms of <laughs> yes right. you know relationally and right. like i think it actually hasn't occurred to them yet that she would actually be doing something to uh, i love it yes. <laughs> yeah that's great that's great yeah that's beautiful that's beautiful yeah like because it, it sort of works it works emotionally for ronnie because ronnie is used to being the like the talky superstar and it mm-hmm. works sort of like technically for joao because he doesn't think of alice in the game as a person like she doesn't have any sort of active element to her in his mind just yet like right. like she is she is a bit of code that's in that may be important to yeah. saving the real alice well interestingly it's to me it's on the one hand that is true like she's just like oh he set up this process to like kind of hold that thought basically yeah right right at the same time he sees less distinction between the virtual version of alice and the real version of alice whereas ronnie is right. like no we need to save the real alice <laughs> yeah, right right exactly exactly right right right. yeah i love it i think that's great yeah i think that okay that's perfect and yeah and then we get a little uh the crystal ballness with the um, the queen and we're off to the races that becomes very dramatic there? yeah Can good nope still good still here did can you hear us? Lose you? You're a little choppy. <laughs> was I the, was I the one who was choppy, or was it Dan? Uh, I I was fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> From my point of view, <laughs> um, yeah, I think you were choppy, Wes. <clears throat> oh, all right, yeah. Um, we we got two kittens, and they've gotten in the habit of unplugging the one router that connects my office nice. to the rest of it. Anyway. Nice. Yes. Yes. That didn't take long. Train your cats <laughs> yeah, exactly. The cat. All right, tell mine. me what you think. Yeah, totally. Tell me what you think of this. I've changed. Okay, cool. uh, just change that. See what you think there. Same. Where are you at? Sorry. Um, highlight. Uh, 
Oh yeah, yeah. So I like this kind of stuff. That's interesting. Yeah, I like this. And are we going to have her actually then try come up with something to say to the mirror that um, references the real world? Right. Yeah, that still sounds good to me. Um, mm. Okay. Uh, we could put that right here. Yeah, and we can. We don't necessarily have to figure out what that is this second, but. <laughs> Alice looks around in front of the bars, looking back at the weird lady. Alice smiles, smiles broadly at them, somewhat maniacally. <laughs> oh, yes, for the viewers at home. Yes. yes. Yeah. That is what Alice yeah. That is uh, Alice's uh, new last line, but now yes. she's going to also say something to the mirror. Yeah, I really, I definitely picked up. That's fun. That's a great, that's, that's the, uh, that's the character spice I was looking for right there. Brilliant. Yep. Cool. <clears throat> Excellent. Um, okay. So, Dan. Um, Wait, just a sec. Tell me yeah. what you think of this. Uh, I'm still typing here. Sure, sure. Uh, for the audience, she takes a gulp from her beer and then looks around for a moment. She turns to the mirror and stares at it intently, then says under her breath, while looking at herself. Yeah, uh, and then what is she gonna, what yeah. is the thing that she says to be the? <laughs> yeah, Crowdsourced. You... <laughs> sure. Suggestions from the audience. Because <laughs> like, the, the, it would make the news in Wisteria because Nobody in Wisteria has ever said anything that is out of, it's, it's literally impossible to say things that are out of fiction. And so it is a major glitch that this would happen. How about this then? Yeah, Yankees over, pace, over the Pacers, game three, 16 point spread. Like, <laughs> like, it would take almost no time at all for that to be the hot topic on, uh, say uh long live the queen <laughs> that would be that would be hysterical i just uh whoops oh i see what i did uh, yeah i mean that 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 works for me i think we you know can continue to brainstorm but yeah but i think that I think, fine. Yeah, like that's a, yeah we, we there, there may be some finessing but i think that that's a great uh that's a great that's a great gag